So it's Second Kings 22, 1 through 13. Uh, Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. His mother's name was Jedidah, daughter of Ada. She was from Bozkath. <laughs> he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed completely the ways of his father, David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. In the 18th year of his reign, King Josiah sent the secretary, Shaphan, son of Azaleth, the son of Meshulam, to the temple of the Lord. He said, go to Hilkiah, <laughs> the high priest, and have him get ready the money that has been brought into the temple of the Lord, which the doorkeepers have collected from the people. Have them entrust it to the men appointed to supervise the work on the temple, and have these men pay the workers who repair the temple of the Lord, the carpenters, the builders, and the masons. Also have them purchase timber and dress stone to repair the temple, but they need not account for the money entrusted to them because they are honest in their dealings. Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan who read it. Then Shaphan the secretary went to the king and reported to him, your officials have paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to the workers and supervisors at the temple. Then Shaphan, the secretary, informed the king, Hilkiah, the priest, has given me a book. And Shaphan read, it, read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his robes. He gave these orders to Hilkiah, the priest, Ahikam, son of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Micah, Shaphan, the secretary, and Aziah, the king's attendant, Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all of Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that burns against us because those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. I was like, eh, I think there's a little background here that, that's more than just they need to have opportunities. Thank you. And then Jacob threw his wife under the bus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's start with prayer. Father in heaven, we do thank you and praise you for you are a mighty, awesome God worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. Lord, may we hear your words and obey your words to bring you glory and honor that you, O oh faithful God, will bring our children up into the promised land. Lord, may we take your command seriously, for you are a holy and righteous God. May we, through the power of your Spirit, proclaim the words of Jesus Christ in our lives, and our actions, and all that we do. Lord, may we be hearers of the word and doers also. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So you're not in Second Kings yet, don't worry. I just wanted you to see how... If we do not train up our children, that they depart from the ways of the Lord. Roughly 750 years had come since, the, since Joshua told again the children of Israel, this new generation, to worship the Lord only, to serve Him, to tell their children about Him. When they get up, when they go to bed, when they're walking along, whatever they're doing, to continually tell them about their wonderful, mighty God who has blessed them so much, that it brought them into a land that they did not build the cities of, that they did not plant the vineyards for or anything else. It was all because God loved them and provided for them. That's been about 300 plus years since David was, was king after we get past the judges and everything. And here's an eight-year-old boy who becomes king. Eight years old. But he fears God. I don't know where he got his training from. I, I just account it to a faithful God. And we'll get to that when we get to kings. We may preach over, over him. I don't know. But he's spent time as king and everything. And, and it's been good. And then he goes out and finds the book of the law, which had been completely forgotten about among Israel. Wow. We have a, an obligation, such an obligation, to teach our children. And such a privilege 
that we can go home and pick up whatever Bible, electronic device, whatever, and read to our children so that they do not forget who the Lord their God is. And guess what? Hopefully you're reading along with us and everything that your Bible isn't somewhere over in the corner with dust all over it forgot about with however many copies that you have laying around. You're not going to get it this way. You're only going to get it this way. Okay? And they're going to get it at first. Kira says all the time when we sit down, she says, read me the Bible. She doesn't say read me a Disney story or anything else. That's God. And it convicts me. She says, read the Bible to me. And I'm like, yes. Thank you, Lord. Of course I will read the Bible to her. I got to tuck her in bed last night. She said, read me the Bible. I said, well, I don't have it with me. I said, but can I tell you a Bible story? And she said, yeah, 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 yeah. And I got the privilege of doing that when I tucked her in bed. So, our children are a blessing. It's good to see them. You're always welcome to say that. And Jesus said, suffer the little children not to come unto me because we don't need to forget that so that we train them up. He also said that his father's house was to be a house of prayer. So Wanda, come up here and let's start with praying over you. Wanda's going into surgery next week and she's apprehensive. The doctors have told her, oh, it's going to be a piece of cake. Oh, it might not be here. We don't know, but we know God is in complete control. And we want to lay hands on her and pray for her so that we can help provide peace, that we can bring our prayer request to the Lord because He wants His children to come to Him. He knows our desires and everything, so why should we pray? The reason we should pray is because He wants us to say to Him what we desire. And if our hearts and minds are set on Him, Jesus said that we can say to the mountain, go jump in the sea and it will be so. So come up and pray with me. If you'll start us off, I'll close us. Lord, we thank you for your mercy, for your goodness, for your love. And at this time, Lord, we wish to ask for you, your healing hands to be placed upon one. And also, Lord, I want to pray for the, the physicians and those that will be doing the surgery. And be with Denise and I as we careful. In your loving grace, thank you, Lord. Lord, we just give her the peace that she goes in. And this way, Lord, everything will go fine. And as long as she's got she's her mind on you, and to God, God the doctor's hand, and everything will be fine. So we trust in you, Jesus. Go ahead on this. Our Father, we thank you for the skill that you have enabled the physicians to have to see how you put our bodies together. And we know that you heal in many, many ways. And you seem to have chosen for her to go through the surgery. We just pray that your hand will be on the physicians, upon her body, Lord, upon her as she prepares for the surgery. And that cleanliness will be uppermost, that you will keep the infections away that scare us so much. And give her a quick recovery, Lord. Give her the strength that she needs to do the therapy that's important afterwards. And we know it can be a very successful We love her, Lord, and we love her, and we just pray that this will be a miracle and that she will be have her arm bent, using it for your glory.
Father God, you are a great and mighty God, and we come to worship you today. Lord, we thank you for your love and your faithfulness. We thank you for the spirit that binds this body together. And Lord, we pray together in unison over Wanda today, Lord, to just lift her up, to fill her with the peace of Jesus that comes as a child of God, to bring her healing that you can bring her. Lord, we just pray that all things that you do, do work together for your good. But we pray specifically right now that you give her peace and that you give her healing, that you be with John and Wanda in this time and you give them just the compassion and love to pour out to make her feel even more loved as a child of God and a, and a mother and a wife, Father. We thank you and praise you for all the things that you do. Again, we thank you for this unity of the Spirit that can pray over this precious daughter of yours. We pray for healing and peace in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, you should have finished the book of Joshua by now, and you should be in the book of Judges. Almost. Some of us, that's why we need each other to keep each other accountable. So, where are you at? Almost. You're a little behind. Come on, you can do it. Okay. Maybe you've learned from your reading, and it might be in your books that explain more, but Joshua, the name, literally means Jehovah is salvation. And if you did not know that, that when the Hebrew was translated into the Greek, the same word for Joshua, where Joshua is mentioned in the New Testament, is the exact same word as Jesus. It's expelled exactly the same. In fact, we didn't even use the word Jesus until more modern English. The last 400 years or so, we called Him Yeshua, the same name that would have been the pronunciation of Joshua. Because this Joshua did lead his people into the promised land. Not his people, but God's people. A holy nation that was picked by God to bring glory and honor to him to tell the world about him. He didn't want to destroy the heathen nations. He wanted the Israelites to shine before them so that the ones that would come to him would come to him. And you read of Rahab the prostitute and you even read it later when you read the New Testament that she's in the lineage of Jesus and everything. You know, there's no sin whatsoever so big that you could ever do that God is not big enough to forgive you and bring you into His family. God is so big and so awesome. And this Jesus of the New Testament will lead His people, God's children, into an eternist, eternal promised land. One that is so much better than the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Jebusites, and so forth. It will be a land not of just milk and honey, but a land where there is no pain and suffering, no sickness, no death. Only the good things that God our Father has intended and created for us. So Jesus truly is our salvation. The way to get true peace. If you remember from the little... Uh, seg segments that I've played and preached about Shema means to hear and obey so if I say Jacob take out the garbage it's implied <clears throat> he's going to do that right if he doesn't he's disobedient if he does that there might be joy in the house if he disobeys what is there going to be probably punishment and garbage, and garbage still in the house it's not taken out we also learned that ahava is the word that means, the root word that it comes from means to give. To give what? To give love. That if we obey God, we, we are showing our love for God. If we love God, we will obey God. It's this never-ending circle. That's why I always do the cross sign. If we're in right relationship with God because we love God, we will love others. We will be the hands and feet of Christ. If we are loving others, we prove that we have the love of God in our heart. So this is what we've learned up to this point, and we read from Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9, those verses, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commands that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children." 
Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and your gates. Obviously in 700 years, and I know that's a long time, but obviously the Israelites weren't doing that anymore, were they? <laughs> As we read in the Judges, they're not doing it that far into, let alone doing it for generation after generation after generation. But why would we not? If God's promises are to or generation after generation after generation, why are we not training them up with that fervency to love the Lord their God? Why would we not post it on the door frames of our houses? Why would we not get talk about it when we get up and go to bed? I even get from my kids sometimes, today just put your dad cap on a little bit more than your preacher cap. And I get it's the same cap though because <laughs> I have to train up my children. But I, I, I'll, no I won't. <laughs> I'll try to acknowledge you as I acknowledge my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because I can't be still and quiet about it. If we are, we need to go up on the mountaintop and listen to the rocks cry out because they proclaim the glory of God. What happens when we fail to love the Lord our God with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our soul, all of our strength? I'll let you fill in the blank. What happens when we fail to hear and to obey? It's the same word, our, the Lord our God. How about this one? What happens when we fail to teach our children to love, hear, and obey? and teach their children. Maybe that's kind of where we're at in this country today. Where you, you listen on the news, especially if you listen to Christian radio and listen to the news there, you hear of a persecution every single day about someone who proclaimed the word of Christ. In this country, we're, we're, we're one nation under God. Ooh, let me not say that too loud. Did you tape that? <laughs> There's a man in Canada right now that called a person by their natural born gender and got a $50,000 fine. There's many other things out there. I could give you numerous after numerous. What world are we living in? And it's not just the United States. And huh, we're not persecuted at all like Christians are in other parts of the world who watch their families die for professing the name of Jesus Christ. What an opportunity that we have to teach our children while the light is still in this country. Maybe it's flickering. Maybe it's not as bright as it could, but guess what? When we put our flames together, they'll burn brighter. We can proclaim the Word of God more boldly to our children. They won't just see my faith. They'll see your faith, and it will inspire them. Verse 7 in the NIV said, Impress them on your children. The NLT says, Repeat them. The CEV, which is a common English version, says, tell them. But here I've got to say that the King James wins out. <laughs> the root word, the word used again in Hebrew is shanon, which means to pierce and sharpen. Like you would pierce with an arrow, you would sharpen it up so that when it hits, it impacts and does damage. Ha, ah, that's what I'm supposed to do with my children? The King James says, thou shalt teach them diligently. And then goes on to say how? By posting them on the door frames. By talking about them when you get up, when you go to bed. All the time about your Lord, your God. So they do not forget the wonderful and mighty things that He has done. There was a faithful remnant. There had to be a faithful remnant because someone had to help teach the children because Josiah knew about God. He sure didn't know it from the book of law because the book of law was lost at that time. But there's always a remnant, a faithful remnant. May we be a church that is a faithful remnant in this world today. Because in so many churches you won't even hear Jesus mentioned because it's not necessarily the way to build attendances and to get money for programs. But I will tell you in this church, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I hope you agree with that. <clears throat> hopefully we are that faithful remnant. If you came Friday, you saw the movie Samson. And I enjoyed that. I was afraid it might be a little too violent and stuff because when Samson gets the bone of the donkey and, and goes out and slays all the Philistines, the Bible says that he literally piled them up. He killed a thousand. And in the movie, he literally did pile them up. He got them piled up so much around him that he had to knock the bodies off of him. 
Kind of gory, but that's what the Bible said. But in that story, and I got copies if you need it, in that story, it didn't talk about each time that Delilah tried to, to betray him. And in that story, Delilah was pretty much in love with him. But some of the Bible stories that we've seen, which are maybe good interpretations of the Bible, but you need to read the Bible and let it speak to you because it's personal, it's living. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the soul and the spirit. Mm. Didn't show any of those things in the movie, and she loved him, but she was between a rock and a hard place, and she had to betray him or lose her own life. And it didn't show each time before, it just showed the one time. And I asked Jacob, I said, because I was reading, and I said, Jacob, tell me about the story of Samson afterwards. And he said, yeah, she bound him with, I don't remember what it was, I said, bowstrings at first. He said, oh yeah, and then he just popped, pop, broke loose and everything, and then he went boom, pow, to all the Philistines. I said, did he really go boom, pow, to all the Philistines? You'll learn when you get there. Samson's only in four chapters. Didn't say he went boom, pow. It did say that the Philistines were hidden, and it makes sense. They paid Delilah to betray Samson and find out his weakness so they could pounce on him. But when he breaks the bowstrings, I'm going to stay in the closet. I don't know about you. I'm not going to come on pounce on the man that I saw his strength not disappear from him. But if you look back, think back to the movies that you've seen prior, to the Bible stories you read, he did each time go boom pow. But the Bible doesn't say that. Wow, we should read the Bible and see what it has to say, shouldn't we? So we know the truth. So I was really inspired by that movie because it got me to read my Bible to see if what they portrayed was actually Scripture or not. And it was. Maybe he went boom pow, maybe he didn't because the Bible doesn't tell us in that case. But it got me reading my Bible and talking about it with my son. That's what we're supposed to do, right? So that they won't depart from the ways of the Lord. So they'll remember what their Lord, their God has done for them. So that you get along at the end of Joshua and you read this part. But as for me and my household, we'll serve the Lord. Do all of you know that? Did it start with a but? So we need the word before. And if you look most of the time, and I forgot to bring it in today, but I bought some vinyl letters that I'll give you and Jacob already offered to make some for you. And it has Joshua 24, 15 on it, and it says, As for me and my house. I don't think it has the but. Most times you don't see the but. But the but gets me thinking that I need to read back, so I need to read something. Do you know what the verse really says? Joshua 20, 14, 24, 15 says, But if serving the Lord is undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Maybe you've seen it that way, but you probably haven't seen it written this way. Whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in the land that you are living. I guarantee you, you won't hardly find it that way. That, that part's left out. Is it not needed? Is it offensive? Why is it? But as for me and my household, we'll serve the Lord. So even when you're quoting Bible verses, Satan is trying to deceive you. That's exactly what he did when Jesus went to the wilderness. He tried to deceive Jesus with Scripture itself. But as for me and my household, we'll serve the Lord. What is that in contrast to? It's in contrast to if it doesn't seem desirable to you. Not that you're a bad person or anything else, just that you want to be saved and content like you are. You don't want it to cost you anything. You don't want to have to proclaim the Word. You want teachers to be responsible for raising up your children or the world to be responsible for raising up your children but you don't want to be accountable to God for raising up your children. That should be what seems desirable for you. And then it goes in between that and says, the, those gods that your ancestors served, learn from history. Your ancestors have already done this, and now also you're living in a land of heathen gods that God has warned you, get rid of all these idols, get rid of everything, kill them all so they don't infect your children. I don't want infecting my children. I want to teach them to love and serve the Lord their God. And that's what's desirable for me. So if you hadn't got there, we're going to finish out Joshua right now. We're going to speed read through it. But Joshua 23, because if you notice, Joshua 24, 15 started with a but there also. So we need to read this. 
Joshua 23 is Joshua's farewell to the leaders. And it reads this way, After a long time had passed, the Lord had given Israel rest. What does the new Joshua, the New Testament come for? But to give us eternal rest. He had given them rest from all their enemies around them. Joshua, but by then, was a very old man. He summoned Israel, their leaders, their elders, leaders, judges, and officials, and said to them, I am very old. You yourselves have seen everything the Lord God has done to all the nations for your sake. It was the Lord your God who fought for you. Remember how I have allotted as an inheritance. I'm dropping down to verse 6. Be very strong. Be very careful to obey all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, the book that Josiah's men found in the temple with dust covered all over it. Verse 11, So be very careful to love the Lord your God. But if you turn away and ally yourselves with the survivors of these nations that remain among you, and if you intermarry with them and associate with them, then you may be sure that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations before you. Instead, they will become snares and traps for you. Verse 14, You know with all your heart and soul that not one of all the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fit fulfilled. Not one has failed. But just as all the good things the Lord your God has promised you have come, have come to you, so will he bring on you all the evil things he has threatened. Choose this day whether you will choose blessings or cursings, life or death. Until the Lord your God has destroyed you from this good land that he has given you. If you violate the covenant of the Lord your God which he commanded you and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, the Lord's anger will burn against you and you will quickly perish from the good land he has given you. Chapter 24. The covenant renewed. The covenant that was already made. God has held accountable to his end of the bargain, but has his children but yet God is still faithful to their children. Joshua and Caleb were the only two that entered the promised land, and that's because they loved the Lord their God wholeheartedly. But Caleb, 45 years later, had to still fight. He had to fight the giants in the land. The, the land of, that he got allotted to him still had the giants in the land. And he said, ha, praise be to God, I'm as strong at 85 as I was at 40. Give me that land and let me go kick some hiney. Right? He didn't back down. That's what he told his family. And they inherited that land. Chapter 24. Then Joshua assembled the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel. And they presented themselves to God, making themselves holy before a holy God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord God of Israel says. Verse 7. You saw with your own eyes what, he did, what I did to the Egyptians. But, I'm putting a but in there. <laughs> then you had to live in the wilderness for a long time. That was never my plan for you, my children. You never had to wander in the wilderness. Verse 8, I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them before you, and you took possession of their land. Verse 13, So I gave you a land on which you did not toil, and cities you did not build, and you live in them and eat from their vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now then, fear the Lord and serve Him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of God your ancestors worship before the Euphrates and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Verse 15, But if serving the Lord seems what? Undesirable to you. Don't leave that part out. Because I don't like putting that part in there. That's the part I would like. It's not undesirable. I mean, Lord, you know that I want your will, but I got this to do today. I got that to do today. I'm just so busy. I'll do it when this is done or that's done. Choose this day who you will serve. Jesus says you can't serve two masters. You will love one and you will hate the other. Oh, I don't like that either because I love the Lord my God. I do. Then do I serve Him with all my heart? all my soul, all my strength? And do I love my neighbor as myself? 
All the law, all the prophets point to these words. And that's the words that Jesus Christ died for. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this very day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But, <laughs> but as for me, Joshua, as for me, Alan, as for you if you'll put your name in there, as for me in my household, my household with me, because of God's faithfulness, we will serve the Lord. Verse 16, Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God Himself who brought us up and our parents out of Egypt. What happened to their parents though? Don't forget that. Their parents are not entering the promised land. Only two that were faithful to the Lord. But it was our God Himself who brought us and our parents out of Egypt from the land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because He is our God. But did they do that? Verse 19, Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. What? what, is, what why are you saying, Joshua? You've led us all this way and you're not able? I am not able. But because of Jesus' death on the cross, God lives in me, the Holy Spirit. And it is His will that through His Word and through His Spirit that I am sanctified and made more like Christ. Yeah, I have to start out with milk but then I can move on to solid food. And as I read this word, the Spirit of God reveals Christ to me so that I can look back at the Old Testament and see the love of God and the, the faithfulness that He has to call up a new Joshua to save us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I can see that faithfulness and love where others who don't know this see a mean and vengeful God of the Old Testament. But I see a holy God that loves His children and wants the best for His children and gave up His only Son to die for those children so that they may spend an eternity in a perfect place called heaven. And that's what I want to live my life by and teach my children. So as for me and my household, today I will choose to serve the Lord. There are several blessings that I want to tell you about in just a second. And you may want to write these down. I'm giving you forewarning in case you want to write these verses. Because they give these promises of God. So I'm going to ask you these questions first. Who do you serve and obey? Do you serve and obey the Lord your God then with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? Are you leading your children and grandchildren into the land that Jesus promised? Will you obediently follow Jesus your Lord into the eternal rest that He has promised for His brothers and sisters? Will you do that? I'm asking you those questions this very day. Before I do that, I want to share something about following that I'm proud of. By now, most of you have seen the little coffee stand out there. And some of you probably said, well, what's a coffee stand doing in the church? Well, I'll tell you why the coffee stand's in this church at this point. Because my son and my daughter, or daughter-in-law, whichever way you want to say it, because I call her my daughter, because I want her to feel loved, but i got to say daughter-in-law so you don't think it's hillbilly from the south, they marry their in-laws. No. <laughs> and then she keeps me straight because she tells me from time to time that I don't act like I love her that way all the time, which quickens my heart. And, and brings me to the throne of God. Do I? Well, they wanted to do this. Jacob built that coffee stand. He wanted to have it out for Awanas, and he wants to do it here. They want to do it for ministry. He told you that last week. What he didn't tell you, okay, and I don't care how they're serving the Lord. If they're serving the Lord, they're serving the Lord. I don't care if it's in Africa or if it's here or whatever. I care that they're serving the Lord. I don't know what his exact will is for their lives. And you don't either know what the exact will is for your life, but you should be serving God every single day. He's not put you in some other place. Not wonder why, why I'm here at this job today or whatever it is. Proclaim His Word here today. Maybe tomorrow He'll call you to a mission field. 
My wife and I keep praying for Hawaii, but that's a different story. <laughs> but he said, I want to do this. And I said, far be it from me to tell you not to do it. And he said, I've got a little jar up there. Here's what I want to do. I want to take all my tax money that I have, but I may be spending it faster than I thought, Dad, because I really didn't calculate the cost of this venture well. Some of us haven't calculated the, the cost of following Jesus, have we? Jesus specifically talks about that. He said, I'm going to put a little jar up there and people can put their donations in there because they might stop by Starbucks and buy a coffee anyway. Now they don't have to. But he said, I want Michaela, Michaela and I to finance this ven venture. This is our vision, our, our venture, and we're going to put the finances into it. It's going to be our offering. He said, but I remember reading a story about Jesus asking another disciple, how are we going to feed this crowd? And the disciples, I don't know. We don't have enough money in the treasury. And even if we went and bought all the bread in the whole countryside, we wouldn't have enough to feed this amount of people. So they brought a little boy with his lunch to Jesus. And they fed the multitudes. So he said, I'm going to put a little donation jar out there. He said, and whatever comes in, and I'm going to give it back to the Lord. And I know that he'll multiply it just like he did the fishes and loaves. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for my son following after you and forgive me for not teaching him the way that I should to teach him more about economics than I do more about fearing the Lord as God and serving him so I just wanted to bring that out as an example and say thank you son I'm proud of you and I want to give you these verses in closing to give you hope for your family Deuteronomy 4 verse 4 Keep his decrees and commands which I am giving you today so that it may be well with you and your children after you and that you may live long in the land the Lord your God gives you for all time. Psalm 112, 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Proverbs 27, the righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. Isaiah 65, 23, they will not labor in vain, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a bl people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Jeremiah 32, 39, I will give them singleness of heart and action so that they will always fear me and that, all will, and that all will then go well for them and for their children after them. Oh, but that's Old Testament, right? Well, let me go on to the New Testament. Acts 16, 31 to 33. We get to see a real example of that. They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in the house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. And in Revelation 21, 7, those who are victorious will inherit all this and I will be their God and they will be my children. I don't know about you, but this day I decide to follow Jesus. No turning back no turning back. I have decided that I want to be different. I want to be changed. That here I am to worship and bow down. If you don't know, that was the songs we did in reverse order in the second part. And if we go back to the first part, Jesus, Jesus, name above all names. Is He the name of all names in your heart? Will you serve the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, strength, everything that you have? As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Father in heaven, we do thank you and praise you that you are a mighty, loving, faithful God, that your ways are, trust, that your ways are trustworthy, that your ways are true, that you know all things and that you work all things together for good for those who love you. May we love you with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength. And may you be a faithful God and bring our children to serve you as well. We thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we're going to do communion now. And the, the younger generation is going to close us in service. Okay? So as you...
feel led, if you want to come up, come up.